Mass, co mass coral bleaching as a result of global climate change has become one of the prime concerns facing coral reefs today. And perhaps one of the most um, misunderstood aspects of bleaching is its sort of enigmatic variability. It's very difficult to predict ahead of time exactly which corals are going to bleach and which ones won't. And obviously there are many factors that contribute to this patchiness of coral bleaching. But I think one of the important factors behind the variability that we see is the fact that different symbionts actually have different uh, resistances and different susceptibilities to coral bleaching. So what we found, for example, is that if you look at corals after a, or sorry, before a major bleaching event and then compare them with the same corals after, um, after, after that event, you often find that certain corals that had, if you like, the wrong symbiont in them have disappeared from the population. You might sort of consider it natural selection, if you like. And the corals that had the heat-resistant type are actually coming back and coming to dominate those, those reefs. And so recent studies that we've done now have been looking at corals in Panama and comparing them before and after the El Nino, and we've been finding that a particular type or group of symbiont is becoming dominant on those reefs in ways that it wasn't before the event. And we've gone to Kenya, for example, and, and found the same patterns, that, that this rather unusual symbiont is becoming increasingly dominant on those reefs. And then we've gone to places like Saudi Arabia, um, which are extremely high temperature reefs. The Persian Gulf um, routinely experiences temperature that exceed 33 or 34 degrees centigrade, which is far in excess of what can cause bleaching in other parts of the world. And we found that this unusual symbiont group is dominating those reefs. So I think all this evidence points to the fact that there are heat-resistant symbiont types out there, and that in fact they may, beco may be becoming more frequent on today's coral reefs. Many of these reefs that we've been studying are the, the reefs that have been through the worst stresses, the sort of reefs that have seen 60% mortality, uh, severe bleaching and a lot of mortality. And those are the ones that have shown these shifts. It, I think it's, it does have room for optimism because it means that the bleaching threshold, that's to say the temperature at which bleaching occurs for any given reef, and obviously that's not one temperature, but it's a range of temperatures depending on the coral species composition and so on. But that, that range of temperatures may not be stable over time, but that in fact as temperatures warm up and we see repeated bleaching events, the, sh the range of temperatures at which the remaining corals end up bleaching actually also increases over time. And what that means is that buys us time. Uh, uh, as coral reef managers and conservationists to deal with all those factors, all those competing secondary stresses that we ought to be dealing with in order to provide corals with the best possible chance they have of surviving the environmental changes of the next 30 years, let's say.